Hi everyone, welcome back to another week on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we're working on this piece that's behind me and I'm going to let you see a little bit of the top of it. It is a gorgeous bed frame. So this is a vintage bedroom set that this couple has had for decades now and they entrusted me to give it a makeover. Now it's beautiful tiger oak wood so it's absolutely worth saving but it was just really dark and heavy in their really small bedroom and so they wanted a little bit lighter look, something a little bit more romantic but also a little bit modern and so this is going to be a textured finish. It's going to be a cross hatching um, uh, paint finish that I do that is really popular and it came out absolutely gorgeous on this. I can't wait to show you the final result. The photos are spectacular. I don't do a whole lot of bedrooms, uh, uh, bed frames because they are super large and they can be kind of tough to ship. This is a local customer for me, but I love this idea that she had. It's a full set, so we also did the dresser. That's in a separate video. Um, and the way these came together is beautiful. And I think this is going to keep these as a heritage set. I appreciate that they entrusted me with their bedroom set that they own for this long. They're also celebrating their wedding anniversary this year. And so I'm really excited to get my hands on these, but you guys stick around and let's give this bedroom set a makeover. Here's where I started on this piece and you can see the fairly dark set in a very petite room. It does look a little bit dark and overbearing. She also shared her wall color with me and this helped me choose colors to build up in these layers. Here's the set in my workspace. I'm ready to go ahead and get started. I needed to start out by giving this one a thorough cleaning. Um, it was a little bit old, so I did, especially on the top of this footboard where hands might grab a lot, I did find a lot of oil build up there. So that took a little bit of extra scrubbing. So you just wanna be aware of uh, areas like that where hands have touched it over time. You wanna make sure those get nice and clean or it's areas that are just gonna peel away with your paint finish. Now I know you can see this beautiful grain in the wood and trust me, I did not take this lightly. It was a gorgeous set and I was lucky to get my hands on it. It's absolutely spectacular. This is still going to be under my paint finish if anybody ever wanted to restore it. I did not take away the clear coat so my paint is not going to settle into the wood. I'm actually putting a protective coating over top by putting a paint finish on it. While I was cleaning this, I quickly noticed that my rag kept wiping away brown. And that wasn't dirt coming off. That was actually the oils from this rich old wood were bleeding through and coming at, uh, it was actually activated by putting on the moisture of the cleaner. That's really common for um, pieces that are this age. It's a bleeder. So I knew right away that I'm gonna need to prime this and prime this one really well. It's going to take a couple of coats to make sure that I lock in those oils and they don't bleed through and discolor my paint over time. I chose to use Wiseau primer in light gray and this has quickly become my favorite primer because it's a gripping primer and a stain blocking primer in one. So I really only need one primer in my arsenal. This light gray color is also my favorite because I can use it under colors and I can also use it under whites. And I plan to use some colors and some whites in this, but I'm actually gonna incorporate this light gray as a layer in my overall paint finish. So I try to use primer to my advantage anytime I have to use it. Aside from assessing whether my piece is going to bleed or if I need primer to help with adherence, the other thing that I also will consider is sometimes I really just like how a paint finish lays on over primer a lot better. It helps your paint glide over smoothly. Um, it helps your brush strokes be reduced. I really like what a primer does for a paint finish. So sometimes I will just choose to err on the side of caution and use primer even when I'm not sure that I necessarily have to. On this piece, I definitely had to, but it's gonna work in my benefit. I started out brushing this primer on. This is going to be a finish that's full of brush strokes, so I'm using that to my advantage, but it quickly got pretty tedious because I have multiple pieces. Don't forget I have a headboard, a footboard, a dresser, a mirror, and there's also a base to the bed frame. So I'm going to switch to my handy dandy roller and I'm gonna go ahead and roll this primer on for the sake of speed. This is a flocked roller from WizFlock. I really love their rollers. They roll on really nicely. Um, and I just used a brush to brush into any areas that the roller couldn't get. So this was a brush and roller combo. This primer goes on really nice and easily, just like a paint. You get pretty good coverage on your first coat. Two coats are always recommended with a full dry time in between your coats. I ended up actually using three on this piece because they were so rich and so oily that they were definitely going to bleed. All right, let's start watching this paint finish go on. So as you see here, I've already got a couple layers on. I started with my gray primer underneath, and then I started with a cross hatching of a dark charcoal gray. That color is called Weather Vane. It gets slightly lighter as I go over top um, to a lighter gray, and now I'm coming up to even a lighter color still. Um, and this color is called gray linen. So each, each layer on this finish, I tend to build up by alternating colors and making sure there's contrast between the layer underneath. 
I want each one to show up. So I start with my darker colors first and I'm gonna build them up progressively lighter as I move on. I will list all of the colors that I used in this finish in the description for this post so you can see the full catalog of colors. It's quite a bit. I wanna say I probably did about seven layers of colors on this, but each one is essential. It sounds like a lot. It's a really tedious process on this finish, but the end result looks like a woven fabric. So each layer you can figure, uh, it looks like a thread woven into the fabric. I am using natural bristle chip brushes. They're pretty inexpensive throwaway brushes, but I use these on this finish because I wanted that to accentuate those brush strokes. I want them to show up. And these textured cheap br uh, bristle brushes actually give me all those brush strokes that I want. Normally, if I'm trying to get a smooth finish, these would be the brushes that I avoid. In this case, they work to my benefit. So you can really see here as you look up close how I kind of let the bristles glide over the top. I apply very little paint onto the bristles of the brush and I just have to refill it quite a bit. And then I'm just gonna let it catch all the brush strokes of the coats underneath and it starts building up this really amazing texture. I'm using a cross hatching pattern for my brush strokes. That would be just like what you would see in a, in a fabric. You would see some fibers going vertical, some going horizontal. This finish has a longer than normal ugly phase. I'm not gonna lie to you, it looks ugly most of the way through. It really pulls together on those final layers is when you can actually see the results of all your hard work. The other thing I wanna mention on this bedroom set is it will likely be one of a kind because I don't think I would ever do this finish on a full bedroom set again. And the reason for that is over multiple pieces because there's so much variation in this finish, it was really hard to get a consistent look over multiple pieces. I'd done it before on two, but never this many pieces altogether. It did get really tedious also. So I would say uh, keep this to singular pieces, maybe two a set of nightstands at most, but I wouldn't recommend doing an entire bedroom set. So my goal on this finish is to build these layers up into soft whites in the, at the end, and that's kind of where I am. So I started using some whites in the Wiseau line. They have a great selection of whites. So I chose ivory, which has some yellowy undertones, cashmere, which has some gray undertones, and then a pure white like bone is great to get some variation in between even the whites. And then I also wove in an oyster color metallic, um, and that's gonna give me some shimmer. And you have to think about when a fabric hits the light, if it's got some metallic fibers in there it's going to hit the light just right and that's exactly the effect that the metallic gives on these ladder coats i am using a little bit of water to sort of thin out the brush strokes and it almost gives the effect of a color wash where it's going to soften and lighten some of those colors underneath but you're still going to see that there's variation there this is helping to really soften the look. It's gonna bring down the harshness of some of those layers by adding that little bit of water and letting those colors kind of wash over the top of the darker grays underneath I'm still using those same cross hatching brush strokes. I've got a really light hand here so that my brush just glides over that texture underneath and keeps picking it up with each layer. I'm finally coming up onto the final layers and I tried to not make this too long and tedious for you guys to watch, but I wanted you to also see how many different times I came back and was doing the same thing using different colors, building them up lighter as I go. So now I'm up to the pure whites as I get onto the top, but you can still see that creamy ivory and the cashmere showing through underneath, the metallic white and even little peaks of those grays. So each layer in this finish does matter. So once I had my paint finish all done on this headboard and the footboard, I came back and I'm gonna add a little bit of glaze to bring out some of these details. This was the other thing um, on this bedroom set was it had great details in it, but in the dark wood and that really busy tiger oak uh, grain, it was really hard to see them. You didn't notice that it had these beautiful feet on it and this beautiful leaf detail around the edges. So I have this paint finish on and now I'm gonna use a little bit of glaze to bring out those details. I'm gonna brush my dark glaze into all the crevices of these moldings, and then once I've got it all in there, I'm gonna come back with a dry rag and wipe it out. I chose to not clean these up with a wet rag because I do wanna leave that dark kind of smudgy, almost mysterious effect around the edges. After my glaze, I'm gonna add a little bit of gold gilding wax for an accent. This is redesigned with Prima Decor Wax. This color is called Eternal. It's the perfect antique gold. I don't know how I could live without this one. I use it almost on just about every piece. The feet on this set are incredible, so of course I'm gonna give it a pedicure. I just used an artist brush and I brushed a little bit of that gold onto the nails of these feet. It was a fun little accent. 
I also used a little bit of a champagne metallic around the edges of this piece to give that dark sort of cloudy effect. It complements with the glaze really well and accentuated just how I wanted to. You can see here with the headboard and the footboard how I had to work to get them consistent. Once I had my paint finish all done, my glaze and my wax accents, it's time to go ahead and spray this with clear coat. I sprayed these with two coats of Wiseal Satin Varnish and once this is done, these pieces are complete. It is an option to also either brush on the clear coat or you can apply it using a sponge. I usually apply my clear coats with a sprayer just for the sake of time. It's staging day. I set this up as a bed in my workspace, but it's not a full size bed. I compact it a little bit so that I don't have that full size bed in my workspace. It photographed really well, you guys. I just used some linens and pillows from my own home. So what do you think? Did I do this tiger oak justice? I think the end result is really beautiful and absolutely classic and it's a timeless finish that's going to wear really well. The couple was really excited about it. I can't wait to see their space finish. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You can find links for everything I use in the description for this post. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube and on my website at brushbybrandy.com. Don't forget to click that subscribe button.